Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Vivs from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to display the results using a select query. In my previous video, we already talked about this at a high level. If you guys have missed that video, please check the links in the description text below. So here, let's get started with this. In Eclipse, I have nothing great, just the same UI which I previously had. But this time, I have just added one more button which says View All Details. Now I could show these details inside a list view or I could show them in any other way. For now, I'm gonna show the details inside a toast because a list view involves some additional concepts like the simple cursor adapter which I'm yet to discuss and I will discuss that in my future upcoming videos. So if you see this button view all details, let's find out what it has. There is an on click attribute which calls the view details method right here. So let's go to our main activity make that method inside my Vivs database adapter where I have my insert method here right below this method I'm gonna make the other method that's gonna get all the data from our database so I'm gonna say public void get all data so at this point I will see the same thing I'll say helper dot get writable database this is gonna give me the SQLite database object that represents my database and then I will use this DB and I'll say db.query so this is the syntax that we guys are gonna use which is our query method 2 which we discussed in my previous video so here we are gonna say table name that's gonna be vivs helper dot table name which columns do you wanna select for example if you guys notice there's underscore id name and password the three columns that I want so I will make a string array here that contains the name of those three columns I'll say columns here and put these names inside by saying gives helper dot uid then I'll put the columns here now for the selection usually when you have a condition like where name equals to Anki or something that is when the selection attribute comes into the picture but for now let's just try to select everything so I will make everything else as null in this entire list because we don't need a selection argument neither do we have a group by clause or having or an order by clause now this query is gonna return us a cursor object which we again discussed in my previous so at this point this cursor object is actually containing a subset of the table that contains the results and it is before the first row so I'm gonna use a while loop to navigate from row 1 to row 2 and so on so as long as cursor can move to the next position what I'm gonna do is at the current position get the column and the names that we have right so for example I can say cursor dot get integer if you guys remember the first column is an integer auto increment primary key so I'm gonna say cursor dot int get int and here's the problem it, it is asking me the column index now I could put 0 over here easily and get under UID if you want but a better way to do that let me actually write this in a separate line I'll go up first get the column index of our column UID by saying cursor dot get column index string column name that is webs helper dot UID now why do we do this because if the columns get reshuffled or something inside your main database you don't want to be dependent on the index because it may change right so here I'm gonna say int index 1 so this index 1 contains the index of my column whose name is UID so here I can directly put the index 1 and get the data out of that and this data let it it is gonna give me an integer here I'm gonna say int CID or something like this and that is gonna give me that value same way I'll have to say cursor dot get string now if you guys want I can directly demonstrate this in a simple way so let me actually remove these two statements without the column index and say exactly what happens I'm gonna say cursor dot get int column index 0 this is gonna give me the CID that I want is the UID then then get string at the next column column index 1 over here this is gonna give me the string name and the string password by saying string password is cursor dot get string at column index 2 now directly using indexes like this is not so good because like I said your columns may change position if you decide to change the structure of the database and in that case everything you write over here is gonna go wrong so for now let's use a string buffer outside the while loop by saying string buffer now this string buffer is gonna append all this data inside by saying buffer dot append so I simply get the column index at a particular row get the name at a particular row and the password and I append them to our buffer by saying CID space name space password and put a new line 
so next time again when you will go here by saying cursor dot move to next all this data is extracted for the second row and then again we add it to our buffer we go to the next one and add the data for the third row and so on and this is how it works now of course when you reach the end of the list cursor dot move to next will be false and that is why this statement will not execute anymore so I'm gonna return this buffer by saying string over here just need to return the data and I'm gonna say buffer dot to string is the stuff that we want to return in other words take the string buffer convert that to a string and we are done so this is one of the ways you can return stuff now going back to our main activity here I'm gonna simply say webs helper dot get all data now this is gonna give me a string here and I want to print I'm gonna say string data here and I'm gonna simply print that data using our message class you guys remember the message class there you go there's the class message which has a static void message method that takes a context and the string that it wants to print and I simply make a toast inside so let's go and use this here by saying message and that's all I need to do so now at this point if I run this it should be able to display all the data that we have so I'm gonna select webs place with databases here so at this point as you guys notice my app is up and running now I don't need to add user because I already did that in my previous video and remember this is a database which means all the data is actually stored permanently so I click view all details as you guys notice one waves one two three four five six two Anki ABC and all the other details that I entered so far is getting displayed now this is just the most crude way of displaying data out here if you guys want I could show you more techniques like putting them in the list view and stuff which of course I'll be doing in the upcoming videos but before that we'll have to talk about the simple cursor adapter and loaders possibly because these days the simple cursor adapter is highly deprecated for doing data loading so hopefully you guys have understood something about how to view the details of the data that you have if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching we'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day